Well, I just want to let you know, though, that my disclosure is you are putting the cart before the horse, okay? It is not ready for prime time. He just showed you his last slide, right? Questions and more questions and more questions. How many questions do we, you know, before, when it's ready, isn't there no questions? Isn't it ready to go? I'll show you why it's not ready to go. And I, the other disclosure is I'm only going to need five to maybe seven minutes to disprove that theory, okay? Okay, so isn't CR, isn't CR good enough? You know, so CR is the bottom left of this, of this graph, right? Patients start with a, a high burden of disease when they start their therapy. And they can go to a very low burden disease with the drugs that we have now. And I'll show you a few slides in a second. So, you know, MRD, yes, at some point, MRD is going to be a good tool to be able to, to tell how deep we are. But right now, we have something better than CR. We have stringent CR. And what Dr. Kapoor didn't, didn't point to on his slides, he showed a nice slide that he's published that stringent CR is great. We can all do stringent CR right now. We can't all do MRD. And I believe in New York, you still can't do MRD, right? Should I stop here? No, I will keep going. Okay. So I do think that as we get better therapeutics, and on the left side is really old therapeutics in my mind. It's the old ones. It's the old ones like RVD and KRD, et cetera. But soon we're going to have right DARA KRD. You heard that today from Jonathan and DARA VRD. It's going to be really amazing how deep of a remission we're going to get in the, in the frontline therapy of patients. This is, you saw this from Jonathan, uh, initial data from the Griffin trial. In the bottom right, 94% of the patients achieved CR. Wow. And 50% are MRD negative. Now we're talking. Now we're getting to a point where we need a better test, right? And you saw this from, you saw this from my colleague that yes, in CR, if you're MRD negative, you do better than MRD positive, right? This is a prognostic marker, right? We're looking at prognosis. It's an expensive prognostic marker, right? And you have to do a bone marrow. Do patients really want to have a bone marrow? Of course not. Now, I will also point out in this slide that MRD, the underneath the purple line, MRD is important for frontline therapy, like I just showed you, but it also is now getting more important for relapse and relapse refractory studies or, or therapeutics, especially with what I showed earlier, the dual targeted antibodies and also with CAR T cells. So yes, we're gonna need a better measure. I think right now we can look at stringent CR. Here's, you saw this data with MRD. The people who are MRD negative certainly have a better prognosis than people that are MRD positive. You saw it with, with those relapse uh, therapeutics, with daratumab, we, I showed you it with CAR T cells in, in the past. Now, MRD assessment is it's now reckon, recommended by NCCN as part of standard follow-up post-transplant. So do we do it? No. Very few people do it, actually, right? Because it is, in fact, it's a prognostic marker. The hope is that in the future, it'll be a surrogate marker for PFS so that when we do frontline studies and hopefully in frontline studies, patients are in remission for six years or longer. If we can use it as a surrogate, we can tell a difference between two arms without waiting that six years. That's going to be the big thing. But is that today? No, not ready, of course. You saw this, you know, there are criteria for MRD. So we have the ability to look at MRD pre-transplant, post-transplant, in the non-transplant setting, and we also have to, we, we're looking at it for sustained, the first one, the second one, the third test. That means patients have to undergo all these bone marrows. Do they want to do that? Of course not. All right, so we have two ways that we do it right now, right, for MRD of a bone marrow test. That's by flow cytometry that usually can get the, the, the detection level to one cell in 10 to the fifth or by next generation sequencing, where you can get one in 10 to the six. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Let's just go over the advantages. For slow flow cytometry, it's feasible in most patients, meaning you get a bone marrow biopsy, you can send it off for flow cytometry. It does not require a di diagnostic sample. Now, some people say it's widely available. Sure it is. Um, how many, how many people know a center in the country that actually does this in the audience? I would say that probably most of you don't, don't know the center that does it. The only one I know of that does it close to me is the Mayo Clinic, alrighty? So I have to send mine to the Mayo Clinic. I'll tell you about that in a second. In terms of the 
The next generation sequencing, yes, they have a little bit better sensitivity. And, and if you send the initial bone marrow sample off to them, then 95% of the time you can get the fingerprint that you use down the road. If you don't send it off with the initial bone marrow and then you go back to get the paraffin embedded specimen and send it up there, in my experience, it's a, it, you get it maybe 60 to 70% of the time, meaning you can't track MRD by NGS if you don't send it off the, um, off the first sample. Disadvantages. Um, so flow cytometry, obviously, it's a fresh sample. Plasma cells die fast outside of the bone marrow. When I send dual samples, one to the Mayo Clinic for flow cytometry and one to Seattle for adaptive next generation flow, I get the result back from Mayo Clinic that says, zero, I have zero cells. They're MRD negative. And I get the one back to adaptive and they say, you got a thousand cells. And that's because the plasma cells that traveled to my airport hung out in San Francisco a while, then went to their airport and hang out, hung out there for, for the, in the snow for a while, and then finally got there for the test, the cells, they all died before the test. Okay, ready for prime time? You got the answer. Okay, so I'm also going to say, um, I, you know, when, when an MRD negative is reported, if you see a report, do you guys really know, does everybody really know, it was it by flow? Was it by sequencing? Was it by another me uh, mechanism? You might know that, but do you really know what the sensitivity is? Is it 10 to the minus fourth, minus fifth, minus sixth? Do you look to see how many cells they actually got to look at? He was telling us you need two million cells. Really, how many, you got, how many did you have when you sent off your last MRD? I, sometimes I don't even know. Sometimes the people don't even look. He said you need 10 million to get to 10 to the minus six. That's not easy in a bone marrow biopsy. You have to be a very good person, a skilled person to get that bone marrow. In fact, if you look at this, if I show you this, if I put my needle in, in somewhere in this bone marrow and you see the, the, basically the M MRI on the right, there's a, you're going to get a different, a, a different result depending on where you put that in the bone marrow, right? You, so it is very, it, it's very site specific, right? And if, especially if you do it in a patient that has had prior radiotherapy to the pelvis and you get a really low cell uh, result, you're not going to get a good MRD test. And then the final, thing, the final thing I'll say is with MRD, the cells that come back, you don't know if those cells are good cells, meaning the MGUS-like cells. We all have patients whose M protein went down to 0.1 or 0.2 and it stayed that way for 10 years, right? They have MGUS again. So if you do an MRD test, you're going to see, wow, they have, still have a lot of cells left. But if they're MGUS cells, who cares, right? Who cares? Do I have to keep going? Okay. So Joe's telling me to go so I can finish. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to advance. You guys can look at this. I'm not going to show you, show you. I'm going to show you one other caveat. So this is one of my colleagues at UCSF got this back. And I'm going to focus your attention on the third sentence. I'll read it. The estimated MRD value for this sample collected on August 18th has changed from 0 to 17 residual clonal cells per million nucleated cells. That's when they redid the test six months later. It changed from 0 to 16. So if we made a decision at zero, and now it's 17, we just messed it all up, right? Is this ready for prime time? Heck no. OK, my last, the last thing I'm going to say, because I do want to do only five minutes, this is what we need. We need induction. We need MRD testing. We need a decision tree. We, make to, we need to make a clinical decision, whether it's MRD positive, two decisions, or MRD negative, two decisions. And then we need to go on to our further therapy, maintenance, and then decide if they're, if they're negative, you know, when it starts to become positive, do we treat them then, and what do we treat them then with? So there's many different things that we need to do. I'm not going to show you my clinical case other than to show you this woman of mine got MRD positive after her auto, auto transplant. Is that enough to make a decision? No, right? We actually, oh, the, the graph went out. The goal is to actually have a duration of MRD negative. So this woman was MRD negative. She stayed on lenalidomide. She was a piano uh, player. She got toxicity. We then took her off because she was MRD negative. In, a, in six months or a year later, her MRD is now positive. And then she says to me, what do I do? I said, I don't know. Why are we testing this? It's not ready for prime time, right? The future MRD is to do it in a blood test, right? Not in a bone marrow test. We have to do it in a blood test. That's going to happen. It's going to be happening by circulating cell-free DNA. 
It's going to happen by mass spec. My colleagues at the Mayo Clinic, they're now doing mass spec of M proteins. That's going to be better than actually any of these other bone marrow MRD tests or doing mass cytometry or CYTOF on peripheral blood. And with that, I'll conclude. Please vote. Is it ready for prime time? No.